What the? <gasps> Finally, it's here. The crowdfunded short has been released to the public and I can't wait to talk about it. So if you don't know, Long Gone Gulch is a western themed animated web series that came out in January of 2021. The premise of this short reads as so. Rawhide and Snag aren't always the best sheriffs of the strange land known as the Gulch. When crossing off their wanted poster list leads the two into hot water, they must fight for what they care about the most, while going up against a rogues gallery of bizarre characters. Honestly, it was just great to not see another fantasy show in which character A goes into a new world meeting all the other characters for a wacky first season. Think about it, a nice western, you know something I've been asking for basically for like 2-3 to three years at this point, and here we are. Obviously, spoiler alert, go search up the short, watch it in the description below if you don't want to be spoiled, go watch it, then come back here, this video isn't going anywhere. <laughs> if there's one word I would use to describe the atmosphere of Long Gone Gulch is charming. Through every cracked piece of the dry gulch ground, to the silhouettes of any standoffs, to the beautiful music that you would hear throughout the saloon, it's clear that the team wanted to create something that's very expressive, very fun, and very western. There are so many tiny things that add up over the course of these 20 minutes, creating this unique aesthetic that combined with their blend of western themes creates a breath of fresh air in the modern animation scene. Sure, western themed animated stuff exists, but generally not as a standalone product. Generally. To say that they don't use up nearly every western trope within this short would be a lie. You have the skulls, the tumbleweeds, or tumbleweedians, there's a sheriff's office, a county jail, a saloon, and what I enjoy about all of these aspects is that the short never really seems to focus on them. It's not that the short itself is trying to make you believe that it's a western, but because of the writing and immersion that you believe that these characters exist within this world, this world seems believable, which just so happens to be western. With the point being that it feels natural and not manufactured. I can tell the people behind this love the idea of sheriffs, goons, having a pudgy mayor, and mixing and mashing different ideas. For example, like I said before, the Tumbleweedians. I thought that it was a nice addition creating pests, but pests that would make sense within this world. You also have other lesser seen creatures such as a cyclops and a mummy that apparently didn't have anything on underneath all that paper covering. There's also just a lot of funny things that happen in the background that I think add to the energy that they wanted to create within the short. Like Pinchley rubbing his face while Squatch rubs his chin. And then on the other side of the spectrum you have just basic things, like the mayor having pictures of cactuses on his wall. You mean... this badge? Give it back! Hmm... No. The art style is beautiful, the animation is great, the music is great, I honestly think a lot of this will work very well. If there's one thing I personally would have improved, it was the dynamics. There are many dynamics that I did like, such as the scenes with Marigold and the mayor. I enjoyed how he tried to compensate for his short and pudgy build by embellishing his accomplishments, trying to woo Marigold, his assistant slash secretary with gifts, and even at one point flat out asks her on a date. She's having none of it, and more importantly, she's portrayed within the episode to be morally vague. When the big bad villains ransack the mayor's office, Marigold flat out announces that she works with the new guys because they offer better healthcare. She seems to be quite the mercenary, and that complements her all-business deadpan delivery quite well. I also enjoy the dynamic between BW and Rawhide, even if I didn't particularly care for BW's voice. It sounded like the direction that you would give if you wanted someone to sound like they were coming through Discord and they didn't want to wake up their parents. I'm no voice actor, but there is an art to 
having a character speak very low key and soft without it sounding weird as it did within this short. Besides that aspect, her character both being a rival-esque sort of deal with Rawhide but also the person to motivate Rawhide into coming back is interesting and layered and I'm sure a lot of people enjoyed that aspect. In fact, towards the credits, it shows Rawhide and BW hanging out together. So you probably aren't supposed to see them as enemies, yet. One dynamic I really enjoyed was between the main villain Mako and Rawhide. It's actually minor, but my favorite, as it not only tested Rawhide's abilities to be a strong protagonist on a physical level, but on a mental and emotional level as well. One flaw her character seems to have often is the inability to control her emotions when someone pokes at her too much. This seems to affect her accuracy when fighting BW within a saloon, but also times when she fights Mako and the crew. The reason why I highlight Mako in particular, however, is that he seems to bring up the fact that Rawhide's father died, and even jokingly takes credit for the fall. The sheer amount of disrespect on top of her initially losing her sheriff badges, trying to live up to her father's glory days, made her a very compelling character to root for. However, the last dynamic that I want to note, just pointing out the elephant in the room, is the main duo, Rawhide and Snag. Let's go rub it in Mayor Rhubarb's face! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sold on it yet. I'm sure a lot of people are sold on it, but these are basically my reasons why. I want to see more of them to see exactly how they manage to play the whole main duo actually aren't on the same page a surprisingly often amount of time sort of deal. I felt like that was put on the back burner to introduce a lot of the world and other characters, which for a pilot is perfectly okay. But it came at the expense of me falling in love with Snag as a character. I thought he was perfectly fine for a pilot, but when you remove the context of it being a pilot, he's kind of all over the place. I get that he's okay with messing up and gets in the way often, but it seems like a 90-10 relationship when it comes to who messes up. I figure it would have been a lot more equal than that, but given that it's not, it makes me want to look for some redeeming features of Snag and ask, would this work better with just Rawhide? And if your answer is no, then there should be a reason to that. It seems like Rawhide was the main focus of this short, even though they're a duo, and Snag played the second fiddle, which is perfectly okay if that's the direction they want to go, but I would have loved to learn more, maybe even develop a little bit more empathy for him as the main character. Why does he care about his precious hair comb so much, Ronette? Why did he go to Juvie? What made him want to be a sheriff and be under someone's authority so much? These are the things I feel like in future shorts, if they developed, it wouldn't have snag lag so behind Rawhide's amazing performance here. <laughs> What the grits? However, the adventure itself was quite the ride. I love the first fight scene where Rawhide comes out of the weird cake, right? It's a cake. It includes the great line, You ain't never gonna be like your daddy. And quite the impressive standoff, where of course she is victorious, but at the cost of damage and destruction within the gulch. I also enjoyed how they were initially excited to tell the mayor, blatantly going against being proper, and respecting the authority the way that he wants them to, which brings out the younger side of the main duo, being eager to take on the world, but not in the way that I've seen a lot of characters do that in animation over the last, what, 10 years? It's a very unique take. The fight takes place at the saloon in which BW and Rawhide are possessed by these haunted skulls. That was also a fun bout, as it showed that this place has more secrets than it may seem, but also highlighted them as a possible dynamic to focus on in the future. This episode also knows when to put in slower spots, downtime. It's not like this short was on fast forward throughout the entire 20 minute duration. Spots like seeing the mayor enter the saloon to be disappointed and later humiliated. It created tension but was slower paced, and it kept the story going, as this would be where Rawhide and Snag lose their share of badges. But also lets things breathe, as we would go on to explore Rawhide and Snag breaking up temporarily as a crime-fighting duo towards the middle of this. This would also include the great shot of Rawhide sleeping on the grave of her father, which wasn't built up to that much, but it provided for a good visual that I enjoyed quite a bit. The last fight probably takes the cake of my favorite, having lots of comedic elements like a staring contest aka a stare down, but also jokes about Mako looking at the artistic merits of a self-portrait, or Merrick 
Gold cashing in on the villains and taking a paid business leave. However, it also had great action moments, like Snag breaking into action, defending the honor and privilege of his comb, Ronette. We'd also see one of my favorite scenes within this short as far as action goes, where the initially infected frontman of a band that was affected by some potion that BW had would come back later in the short to take Mako, swallowing him whole, but you can see Rawhide running up the length of this giant snake monster, or as I'd like to call him, the Texan Bullworm, distant cousin of the Alaskan Bullworm. And you can tell that this is one of those scenes that probably was harder to animate, definitely on the harder half, in my opinion, just my speculation, but it came out amazing. Overall, I found this short to be quite charming. It's one of those animated shorts that comes up every once in a while that really captures my attention. I'm already on my way to supporting the show when it comes out with the Rawhide collectible, and regardless of whether you buy the merch when it comes out, or you support the show in free ways by just watching it, I definitely think this short deserves at least a first look and also support if you end up being a fan. Until then guys, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you so much for your time. Take care. Alpha out.